It was just another long night on the road for me, hauling freight across the country. I was a truck driver with a solid record and a steady job. My dispatcher, Jim, was the guy who kept me on schedule, lining up the loads that paid the bills and put food on the table. He was a good man, reliable, and always looking out for his drivers. But Jim was on vacation this week, and I'd been assigned a different dispatcher while he was away. It was late, around 2 a.m., and I was parked at a truck stop, grabbing a quick bite before hitting the road again. As I sat in my cab, enjoying the solitude of the night, my phone buzzed. It was a text from Jim. Got a load for you, it read, followed by a pickup location and a load number. I was surprised. I knew Jim was supposed to be on vacation. Hey, aren't you supposed to be off this week? I texted back, curious about the situation. Yeah, still on vacation, came the reply. But I can work remotely. Need you to pick up this load ASAP. It seemed strange, but I trusted Jim. He'd never steered me wrong before. I finished my meal, entered the load details into my electronic logbook, making sure to adhere to all hours of service, HOS, regulations, and headed out to the pickup location. When I arrived at the warehouse, the lot was dimly lit, and the silence of the night hung heavily in the air. I walked up to the office and presented my paperwork to the night manager. We don't have a load with this number, he said, frowning at the documents. Are you sure you're at the right place? I double-checked the address. Everything matched. This is the address my dispatcher gave me, I replied. The manager shook his head. I'm sorry, but we don't have anything for you. Confused and frustrated, I stepped outside and texted Jim again. No response. I texted him five more times, but still nothing. It wasn't like Jim to ignore me, especially when it involved a load. I decided to call him. The phone rang a few times before someone picked up. Hello. It was a young voice, trembling and hesitant. Hi, is Jim there? I asked. There was a pause, then a heavy sigh. This is his son. My dad was in a car accident on the first day of his vacation. He couldn't make it. He's in the hospital, unconscious. I'm sorry. I felt the blood drain from my face. My hand shook as I ended the call. If Jim was in the hospital, then who had been texting me? I returned to my truck, my heart pounding in my chest. The thought of someone else posing as Jim sent a chill down my spine. I sat there, staring at the messages, wondering what to do next. The night seemed to close in around me, and the shadows outside my cab felt darker, more ominous. My shift was over, and I knew I had to go home. I couldn't stay out on the road with so many unanswered questions. I decided then and there to leave the company. Whatever had happened, I didn't feel safe anymore. I made my way back, following every HOS rule to the letter, ensuring I wasn't over my driving limit. The familiar roads felt strange and unsettling. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that something was out there, lurking in the darkness. When I finally pulled into my driveway, the relief was palpable. I packed my things and changed companies, making sure to transfer my electronic logs and keep my records in order. I even changed my phone number, hoping to leave behind whatever it was that had happened. Days turned into weeks, and slowly, the memories of that night faded. But sometimes, late at night, when I'm on a long stretch of highway, I can't help but glance at my phone, half expecting a text from a familiar number, a whisper from the shadows of the road.